Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, McPherson strut systems and uh, how they work. Uh, basically they're pretty easy and uh, simple to understand. This is a basic drawing of one. you got your uh, wheel that turns and down here you have your control arm because in these systems you only have uh, one control arm unlike double wishbone uh, suspensions. And uh, this is the main part up here. This is basically your whole uh, uh, strut assembly here and uh, inside of it you have the shock that goes up through it up to the top and uh, up here around it you have the springs and your springs is basically what's doing a lot of that uh, suspension for you and uh, inside your shock acts as the uh, uh, shock absorber so when you go over a bump it takes a lot of that energy and consumes it right there so that that energy doesn't go throughout your car so you don't feel every single little bump it's taking it from right there and absorbing it there and that's uh, pretty much it on how they work. Like I said, it's just taking it and absorbing the energy, and the spring is what's uh, doing a lot of suspension there. And uh, basically down here, right here, this is your wheel hub, so this is where your CV axle boot will come in to drive that wheel, on a, uh, on especially on a front-wheel drive car system. And uh, here is your uh, steering linkage, and this is uh, your tie rod end where it comes in. So when you're steering it, this is what you're pushing, and that's what steers the car. Uh, the benefits of them is that they are cheap and lightweight. You see them on a lot of front-wheel drive, everyday cars like a, like a Chevy Malibu or a Ford Focus. And uh, they also allow for uh, more uh, space to come in and that's what also helps make it lightweight. But uh, some of the uh, disadvantages is that they, uh, they allow for too much camber, chains, camber change. So on, uh, you don't want that on performance cars. Because uh, when you're turning, you're coming around the corner, if you allow too much camber change, you allow a lot of that weight to shift to one side of the tire, thus losing traction on your tire. So that's why a lot of performance cars tend to use more double wishbone uh, suspension. But uh, the Porsche 911 uses this, and some of the lower end BMW models use it, even Mercedes. And, uh, but they don't uh, necessarily perform as good, as like I said, as a double wishbone. And that's pretty much it, how these work. Thanks for watching.